Trump prosecutor finding Willis Fulton County. First motion filed, nothing there. Second motion, I must say, there is some there there. I'm going to break down the background. All right, let's put it up full mass. I've been reporting on this since day one. Let me give you the full story. Fulton County, Georgia, finding Willis is prosecuting co-defendant Michael Roman. He's the co-defendant in the case where 19 individuals were arrested, indicted by a grand jury, charged with trying to basically overthrow democracy. So former President Trump is now joining the co-defendant Michael Roman to dismiss Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis and the special prosecutor Nathan Wade from the case, accusing the DA of stroking, quote, racial animus in the Georgia election interference case. Now. Remember, the first motion filed was about what? Nathan Wade having a personal and perhaps romantic relationship with DA Fonnie Willis. Which by the way, if was if true, that is basically an office policy violation of Fulton County. Not a legal statutory violation anywhere. There are two reasons that you file a motion. And two elements that will allow it. Either A, you have a basis of law, basis in law, or B, you have a basis in fact. And one of those dynamics adversely impacts the rights of your client as a defense attorney. So you have no basis in law. There's nothing illegal about an office romance. So there's no basis in law for the motion. There was no basis in fact presented in the motion. As a matter of fact, it says contrary to it. It literally says it did not have any evidence to support this other than sources that were not named, that were credible, told them this. You have no basis in law, you have no basis in fact. The motion, in my opinion, should have been summarily dismissed on that premise alone. When the motion was filed, the genesis and the end was for one thing to get the record unsealed of Nathan Wade's divorce, which was taking place in another county called Cobb County. They successfully did this. They were able to change the narrative, get the divorce proceedings unsealed. Documents have been available for days now, hundreds of documents. You know what? Not one mention of DA Fonnie Willis, just as she said in her motion of response. She said, I have no unique knowledge of their marriage nor divorce. I should not have to be involved in this, okay? So that motion should be settled. She should be exonerated. However, while that motion was pending judication, DA Fonnie Willis went to Bethel AME Church and said this. Perfect child, I'm a little confused. I appointed three special counsel as is my right to do, paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attacked one. I hired one white woman, a good personal friend and great lawyer, a superstar, I tell you. I hired one white man, brilliant, my friend and a great lawyer. And I hired one black man, another superstar, a great friend and a great lawyer. Oh Lord, they gonna be mad when I call them out on this nonsense. First thing they say, oh, she gonna play the race card now. But no God, isn't it them who's playing the race card when they only question one? Isn't it them playing the race card when they constantly think, I need someone from some other jurisdiction in some other state to tell me how to do a job I've been doing almost 30 years. I will explain the reason why that statement may actually get the DA in trouble, all right? Put up the picture for a mask, Michael Roman. Remember, Michael Roman is the guy who's currently on trial. He's the why. He's the individual who has been indicted by a grand jury. Trump filed a motion on Thursday to adopt and supplement Roman's motion filed on January 8th that accused Willis and Wade of an improper 
clandestine relationship and profiting significantly from his prosecution at the taxpayer expense, all right? Now, the motion filed on behalf of President Trump seeks to hold District Attorney Willis legally accountable both for misconduct alleged in the motion filed by Mr. Roman, as well as her extrajudicial public statements falsely and intentionally injecting race into the case. There's more. In doing so, according to their narrative, DA Willis violated, this is the motion they filed, her special responsibilities of a prosecutor under the Georgia Rules of Professional Conduct. Her attempt to foment racial animus and prejudice against the defendants in order to divert and deflect attention away from her alleged improprieties calls out for the sanctions of dismissal and disqualification. That's what Trump attorney Steve Sadow said. Now, the motion specifically addresses the actions of Willis on January 14th during the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. According to the motion, Willis, quote, repeatedly and inappropriately injected race into the case and stoked racial animus during a widely publicized speech at the historic Bethel AME Church, including asking God why the defendants were questioning why she hired a black man and why a black female Democrats judgment isn't good as a white male Republican. The motion claims that the assertions by Willis will result in substantial prejudice toward the defendants. Now, here's why this part is important. In the second motion, they're able to connect how this could impact the defendant. The first motion, it was a reach. And most judges would have said dismissed on the premise uh, presented, there is no statement here that's rooted in statute or uh, in fact. As a matter of fact, it lacks both. So you can bring me another motion when you have at least one of them. Those are the rules, gentlemen. That could have easily been said, but this is such a high profile case that I believe political pressure is at play here on multiple levels. All right. So now they're connecting the second motion directly to a defendant's right. This is different. It says the motion also claims the DA. Um, the motion claims that the assertions by Willis resulted in substantial prejudice toward the defendants. The motion also claims that the DA is seeking racially based sympathy for her self-inflicted quagmire. According to the motion, Willis's conduct is a violation of the Georgia rules of professional conduct that say a prosecutor must refrain from making comments that have substantial likelihood of heightening public condemnation of the accused. The motion also points out that the awesome power to prosecute should never be manipulated for personal or political profit. Okay, so let's go down the timeline. The attorney for Mr. Roman files basically a frivolous motion. That frivolous motion is filed on the last day you can file a pretrial motion. It lacks one of the two elements, it lacks both elements, it lacks none of the elements required for a motion to proceed. It did not get summarily dismissed. In the midst of it still being decided, Fonnie Willis makes a public comment that seemingly connects back to the motion that has not been adjudicated. According to the rules for prosecutors, you have a special code of conduct for prosecutors in the state. They cannot do such things, okay? Doesn't mean it doesn't happen sometimes, of course it does. But they can't do it based on the rules, right? Rules have to be enforced. And so she makes this comment, there has to now be a defense to this, but it opens up the opportunity to have her removed. Now remember, the Georgia legislature passed a new law to regulate DAs last year. You gotta see how they play chess and we play checkers. They passed a new law last year to regulate the conduct of DAs, to remove them under certain rules violations. They now have almost all of the ingredients they need in order to enact that law. And this year, they have already presented a new law to strengthen the law to regulate DAs from last year. Do you see how they move? They are evolving, ladies and gentlemen, and we are still reacting. They are making moves that coincide statute, policy, and action to converge at the right point in order to get a victory. You see, regardless of 
the politics involved. They're doing something that Democrats are not doing or left leaning individuals are not doing or progressives may not be doing a good enough job at and that's working together. They're working together and this is what it looks like. I do hope she's able to make an affirmative defense to this motion because you see they're afraid of finding Willis prosecuting them because she she's willing to do it. You get a special prosecutor in there, he's probably gonna take a plea deal or perhaps even drop the case altogether. Mayor Mundell, I hope that was clear in the breakdown. What say you? Yeah, I think I think this was a uh, this is definitely a uh, like uh, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, you're opening your mouth and you don't have to. I think though the one thing that she can lean on is she didn't use uh, uh, Roman's name and she right. said he is gonna say I'm race baiting, but that's what they're doing. That only. Uh, like the only thing is like that could be her responding to the numerous claims that Trump had made about her and her being a fraud over on Truth Social. So maybe his tweets might give her the alley oop she needed in this case from the self inflicted wound that she just uh, she absolutely gave them. Yeah, and and one thing that would have made a, a difference here if she would have said, you know, I, I saw some commentary on Fox News, and I'm responding to that commentary. Uh, just something to delineate from the motion at hand, right? Because now they have an opening. 